بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا يأت لأول الفضل منكم والسعة أن يؤتوا للقربى والمساكين والمهاجرين في سبيل الله وليعفوا وليصفحوا ألا تحبون أن يغفر الله لكم والله غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم one of the great qualities that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us and not only that he taught us he practically showed us in his life it's a quality of forgiving others at a time when a person would do something about which you are hundred percent positive that he is wrong and you're right. And the person gets out of his way to hurt you and did not leave, does not leave any room for making any excuse on his behalf. For doing something like that, at that time, to control our anger, to control our emotions, and forgiving others, it's one of the greatest of the qualities that Allah admires in Quran al Karim. In fact, one thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this quality that not everyone can get it. <laughs> Only those who have practiced sabr and patience will be able to have this quality and acquire this quality. <laughs> and only those who have a great gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extremely lucky to receive special favors of Allah they are the only ones who would get this quality it's a special favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a person to have this quality of being able to control his emotions at a time when he's angry the ayah that I have just recited from Surah An-Nur presents an example that to us we may look at it as an extreme example something that we would just like to leave it there it's difficult to practice yeah we take it as a story something great something good you can say any good word about it but when it comes to us it's not easy to do what this ayah is telling us to do Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiyallahu anha 
was blamed by munafiqeen wal billah wal billah of committing zina imagine someone calls you a liar how would you feel someone say you cheat people how would you feel and now a person goes beyond that and now you go to the furthest extreme there is nothing you could imagine beyond that you couldn't say anything worse than this and saying it about who? The best person you have around you. The wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the greatest family. As Siddiqah, the daughter of a Siddiq. And people accusing her of something like this? I'm sure that's a family that could not even imagine, could not even thought, this type of thought would not even cross their mind. Such a pure family. And when people are accusing her of something like this, what must have been the feeling of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, whose wife is being accused? What would be the feeling of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu? Subhanallah, look at his position. Who on one hand is his daughter. On the other hand, it's his mother, Umm al-Mu'mineen. This is why when someone asked a scholar, what's the difference between Khadija and Aisha radiallahu anhumah? He said, Khadija radiallahu anha, the time when she married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she was the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu anha, the time when she married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she became the mother of all the believers including, including her own father. Umm al the mother of the believers. And she's being accused of something like this. Even if it was right, we would be upset if people would talk about it. What's the need of just spreading rumors, or spreading these type of things? But the point here is that they all are wrong. Of course, they are just making it up. These are rumors. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu had one of his relatives whose name was Mistah. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu used to support him financially, taking care of all of this man's need. Subhanallah. Hardly we find situations like this in our time when we make so much money that we will take care of a family of complete family's responsibility that you don't have to work you just go and learn deen stay around rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i will take care of all of your financial needs mista so happened that he took part in those rumors and he mentioned it to few more people Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when he finds out that Mistah took part in it, it's not that he said, I'm going to go and talk, talk to Mistah. I've been doing this, this, this for him, and he never appreciated my gifts. He didn't say any of that. All he said is, from now on, I will not help him. That's it. And of course, who can say that Abu Bakr was wrong in making that decision? We would do much more than that. We will go much beyond that. I need to talk to him. He needs to learn his lesson. Why would he say something like this? All Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said that from now on I will not help Mistah. Did not say any word against Mistah. Anything else about Mistah. I will not help Mistah. These were the only words of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. If I was there, I would think even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be very happy and pleased about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's decision that yes, if someone is accusing my wife of something like this, you should stop helping those people. How could you support those people? Supporting them is just going against me. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after saying those words, when he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abu Bakr, what decision did you make? About what, Ya Rasulullah? 
about helping Mistah. What did he say about that? He said, Ya Rasulullah, all I said that I will not help him from now on. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not like your decision. Abu Bakr, Allah did not like this decision of yours. And he just revealed an ayah of Quran to me. وَلَا يَأْتَلِ أُولُ الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The people who are virtuous, who are considered to be working people of piety, they should never take oath of not helping the needy people. But look at what he said, Ya Rasulullah. How would I feel like helping him anymore? That said, I don't feel like it. No. They should pardon, they should forgive, they should let go. Why? You make mistakes too. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? As soon as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited these ayahs to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu, Right there, Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu's response was, Bala ya Rabb, Bala ya Rabb, why not ya Allah? I would like you to forgive me, and I'm forgiving Mistah, I will give him more than what I used to give him before. What must have been the feeling of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at the time of reciting these ayahs to Abu Bakr, helping Mistah, who took part in spreading rumors against his own wife? But, this is something that is tell us he is a prophet of Allah. If there is anything he could hide, he would have hidden this ayah that I'm not going to mention it now. Maybe after three days I will tell him this. I will tell him this after the situation will be resolved. But no. The ayah revealed just now and he recites it right to Abu Bakr right there. Abu Bakr, continue helping Mistah. Isn't this showing support to those who are spreading rumors against your own wife? Imagine what we would think about it. But this is the difference. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us a khuluq, a behavior, then we see him at the highest level of that. Wal ya'fu wal yasfahu. They should let go, they should forgive. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? We were talking about Zayd ibn Sa'anna radiallahu anhu, the Jewish rabbi, who came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and is convinced from every sign that he read about the loss of the messengers that would come, that every criteria fits Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The only two things that are missing, he says, I could not confirm those two things and I did not want to accept Islam before confirming those. Yes, hilmuhu jahlu. His politeness, his soft-heartedness will always surpass his anger. وَلَا يَزِيدُهُ شِدَّةُ الْجَهْلِ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا حِلْمَ The more you try to make him angry, the more polite he would become. He says, these are the two things that I could not figure out. So he says, so for that, I used to keep on frequently, frequently keep on visiting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be able to see if I can find something that would show me that really he has these two qualities. Because those were the qualities mentioned of this last prophet in Torah. So Zayd says, I went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once. And at that time, a villager came who was asking him for some help. We talked about this. I'm just going over it very briefly. That a person came from one of the villages. He said, Ya Rasulullah, people of my village accepted Islam, but they are really having a lot of difficulties these days. There is a lot of famine over there. So if you would support us, it would be nice. That will make them stronger in this deen. Zayd ibn Sunnah says, I thought it's an opportunity. I said to him, why don't you take, you know, I'm very wealthy, I have a lot of farms, I can lend you a lot of uh, food and fruits and dates and money. Take it from me and then give it to me at the end of the month. He said, sure. Three days before the end of the month, he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, فَأَخَذْتُ بِمَجَامِعِ ثِيَابِ I grabbed him with his neck in the presence of all the sahaba. 
And I said, Ya Muhammad, ala ta'atini haqqi? Muhammad, why don't you pay me my, the, the money that she took from me? And I know you people, you don't like to pay, pay your, the, the debts on time. And he continues in the presence of Sahaba. He says, I have been frequently visiting you for a few days, for last some days, and I have noticed this a lot amongst you people, that you don't pay people on time. Subhanallah. He's going, he's crossing every limit now. You can ask for it. But you don't have to accuse. Even if you're upset, say what's right. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he wanted, he could have argued about it. But tell me one situation. Prove to me what you're saying is right. Zayd says, Umar radiallahu anhu was the most upset of our sahaba, and he's looking at me as he's going to do something, and in fact, he said it to me. He said, O oh Zayd, Ya adu Allah, O oh enemy of Allah, Ahada ma ara wa asma. This is what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing from you. How dare you would do something like this to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I swear by Allah, if I was not afraid of Allah, I would have killed you right now. Subhanallah, even at that time, he's saying that I have the fear of Allah. The fear of Allah is the thing that is stopping me from reacting. The point is, what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say at that time? What was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's reaction? Zayd says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Umar radiallahu anhu, Ya Umar, Ana wa huwa kunna ahwaja ila hadha, ila ghayri hadha. O oh Umar, in this situation, we, you were supposed to behave in different manner than what you are behaving now. Your behavior in this situation is not right. What should I do, Ya Rasulullah? Look at what he's doing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَن تَأْمُرُنِي بِحُسْنِ الْأَدَاءِ وَتَأْمُرُهُ بِحُسْنِ الطَّلَبِ That you would have asked me to pay him in kindness, with kindness, and ask him to ask for his right in, nice way, in a nice way. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Zayd and whispered, uh, called Umar radiallahu anhu and whispered to him. And he said to him, Umar, go and pay him back. Now, imagine what must be going through Zayd's mind. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whispered to Umar. What did he tell him? I better run away now. Zayd said, this was telling me that he is the messenger of Allah. If he is the messenger of Allah, I trust what he's telling him to. Now he built that trust. The two signs that he was looking for are there. But let's see now what Umar would do. Loudly he said to Umar, that go and pay him back. Although there are three days left, but Umar, go pay him back. But what was it that he whispered to him? He said, when Umar radiallahu anhu paid me back, he gave me a lot more than what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had borrowed from me. But of course, first thing, he gave him the full amount that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had borrowed, and then he said, and this is for you too. So Zayn says, I looked at it and I said, this is Allah, and this is extra. Why are you paying me for this? Why are you paying me this for? He said, this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whispered to me. He said to me, وَزِدْهُ مَكَانَ مَا رُعْتَ O Umar, because you scared him and you were harsh with him, so now make sure you pay him more for being like that, for, behave, for, for, for treating him that way. Subhanallah. Just pay him more because the way you treated him. These are the signs, clear signs. Who other than a prophet of Allah would be able to do something like this? Pay him more. For us, we will count pennies. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out of his home. Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa were extremely upset about some situations. What is this? 
He asked them, why are you people upset for? Ya Rasulullah, didn't you hear what these people of Quraysh are saying? Now they came up with something new to accuse you, Ya Rasulullah, and accuse your family. What are they saying? They told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa what were they saying. And they used to call Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mudhammam, the opposite of Muhammad. Muhammad means the one who's always being admired. And subhanallah, we see how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Muhammad throughout the world. From the time he came and until this day, and inshallah, till the day of Qiyamah, people would be respecting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and following the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, they said that you, they, they call you mudhammam, and then they curse at you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rather than getting upset. And now, okay, we need to form our group, and now we need to do something about it, and write an email, and spread the email to everyone. And imagine when our child will come to us. And he's saying, you know that my, my nephew, my neighbors, and then children from the neighborhood, they all go against me, they were bullying me, they, were, they beat me up, they did this to me. What would we say? Yeah, we have to do something about this. Subhanallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even in those difficult situations, he's saying, let's just leave, let it go. So what, is, what did he say to Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi He smiled and he said, انظروا كيف صرف الله عني شتم قريش وأذاها. See how Allah has protected me against all the curses of Quraysh. All the people who curses that they are an accusation that they are making, they are making it against Muhammad, whoever that may be. And I'm not Muhammad, I'm Muhammad. So why are you people worrying about it? Subhanallah. What a beautiful way of solving these situations. I don't have to worry about it. And you people, there is no reason for you to be upset. They curse at who? They curse at Muzammam. I am Muhammad. So simple. A sahabi. At Tufail ibn Amr al Dawsi radiallahu anhu. Came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, Ya Rasulullah, Allah tadullah ala dawus. Ya Rasulullah, I came from my clan dawus. And I witnessed. For what they have done, they are totally against Islam. They are totally against you and your Sahaba, Ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, I tried my best to convince them, to talk to them, nothing have worked with, with them. Ala tad'ullaha alayhim, Ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, now the best solution is, you make dua against them. The Sahaba sitting around there, they tell us, that as soon as At-Tufayl radiallahu anhu asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make dua against them and he explained the whole horrible situation that he had to go through and how they were really opposing Islam and opposing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahaba said right away he, has, he, he left it his hands. And the Sahaba sitting there, they tell us that we felt that this is the end of that nation. Now the clan of those will be wiped out. فرفع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يدي ده حديث صحيح البخاري رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم raised his hands and he said اللهم اهد دوسا وقت بهم يا الله guide the people of those and let them come to me يا رسول الله to learn deen allow them to come to me يا الله so that they would come and learn the deen of Allah the Sahaba sitting there they tell us الطفيل who was expecting to hear dua against them. When he heard this, he was so ashamed of himself that right after that he said, Okay, Ya Rasulullah, Jazakallah khair, Assalamu alaikum, and he left. On his way, he found a group of his clan coming to Medina Munawwara, sending as a representative on behalf of the rest of the clan to come and learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the situations, this is the reality of life. And we all go through situations like this. Every time there is some complaint that we hear about someone. See what is our reaction? This is extremely important. What is our reaction about situations we hear? This person said this, that person did this, this person was doing this. That is the time when we really can look if we can understand what the application of these hadiths are. And we all I'm sure heard the hadiths. Very, very common hadith, but if you think about it, how difficult that situation is when a villager came, accepted Islam, and right after that he goes into the corner of the masjid and a statue urinating there. 
inside the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahaba are extremely upset as they're supposed to be. And they got up, they got up, they tried to run after the man. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wait, 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 wait. Let him do it. Let him finish now. He started. Let him finish. Subhanallah. At that time, let him finish. Is not an easy word to say. But subhanallah, look at the hikmah. Imagine if Sahaba would have run after the man, and that person, he sees people coming to beat him up, and he starts running around. The najasa will not be limited to one location, it will be all over the masjid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, let him finish. When he was done, that Sahabi says, that villager says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called me. And the Sahaba who were very upset with me, he said to them, go and clean that area by putting water, throwing water on it. And he made me sit with him. He didn't ask me to clean. He didn't ask me to do anything of that kind. Wallahi ma darabani wa la I swear not only that he didn't hit me, he did not even raise his voice on me. Subhanallah. This is what he witnesses for. He says he did not even raise his voice on me. He said to me, in هَذِهِ الْمَسَاجِدِ لَا يَسْلُحُ فِيهَا شَيْءٌ مِّنْ هَذَا الْقَبِيلِ It's not good to do anything like this in, this in the masajid. Subhanallah. He says, وَاللَّهِ مَا رَأَيْتُ مُعَلِّمًا مِثْلَهُ قَبْلَهُ وَلَا بَعْدَهُ I swear by Allah, I have never seen a teacher like him before him or after him. At least you would be a little upset. You would show that you're angry. No, no, no. I'm sure you didn't know. Okay, that's fine. But this is not good to be done in the masajid. This is really what our deen is teaching us. This is the true akhlaq. These are the akhlaq of Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. Controlling our emotions, controlling our anger. Especially when we look at our situation at a time when someone who is under us, who cannot say something, or you know that at least you have a control over his situation. Maybe your wife. Maybe an employee. A person who may not be able to open his mouth at this time. That's the time when we try to get our anger on that person. And that is the worst situation Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith. A person who controls his anger at a time when he is able to take it out. This is the condition. A person who controls his anger at a time when he is able to take it out. دَعَاهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رُؤُوسِ الْخَلَائِقِ On the day of Qiyamah, when all people are waiting for judgment, Allah will call that person, حَتَّى يُخَيِّرَهُ مِنْ أَيِّ حُورٍ عَيْنِ شَاءٍ And will give him the choice, choose any of the hurdu you like from the Jannah. Which means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guaranteeing this person the Jannah before even the judgment will start. The question is, Okay, we heard all of these virtues. We know it's a great quality to have. But when I get angry, I get out of my way. I get out of my mind. I forget what I'm doing. I really don't know what I'm doing. It. I do it out of anger. Then I feel bad about it too. <laughs> Many times for some reason, shaitan makes us feel that you can't control your anger. It's a problem that you have. Okay, we admit it's a problem. But I can't control it really. The fact is, that this is also another trick of shaitan. Just thinking that I can't control myself when I get angry, it's another trick of shaitan. Simple example that I give to children, to my students, and of course I'm only narrating it to you, I'm not telling you that. I tell them, if you're standing behind a donkey, and the donkey happens to kick you in your face, what would you do? Still stand there and try to kick him or run away from the donkey. That time, we know for sure the best thing for me is to get away from him. So what made you control your anger? If a dog bites you, would you try to go and bite the dog or run away from the dog? So you know when to control your anger. You couldn't take a word from a human being like you, but you took that from a dog. You took worse than that from a dog. You were bitten by the dog. A snake comes 
and you got stung by the snake. Are you going to try to grab the snake and bite him or run away? We all know what we would do. That simply means we know how to control it. It's a fact. We know when to control it. You are on the corner of the street. God forbid. May Allah protect you. Someone comes on a gun point. He slaps you. He says, give me what's in your pocket. What are you going to do? Try to slap the man? Or just reach in your pocket. Oh, I promise I don't have anything. Give him your wallet. And still promise I, don't, I won't do anything. You got pulled over by a police. And I'm sure most of you may have, done, may have got through that situation once in your life. The speeding got pulled over. He comes and he gives you a ticket. He said, thank you. How upset you were in your heart. And he pulled me over. He said, and at the end, okay, you take the ticket. You're grabbing the ticket from his hand. Thank you. So you know how to control it. It's only you don't want to control it or you don't know when to control it. This is a fact. So now, the point is, how should we control it? How should we practice on controlling it at a right time? Insha'Allah, we will talk about these solutions in our next Jummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the akhlaq of the nabuwa. Give us tawfiq to follow these beautiful akhlaq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us in his book and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us through his practice. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin wa al-muslimat wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu tabarak wa ta'ala ala khayri khalqih sayyidina wa nabiyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamu al-rahimin amin ya rabbil alameen. Mawla ya salli wa sallim dhani